distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by warmly congratulating the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs and the leadership and all members of the Nigerian Foreign Service on this inaugural edition of the service's annual public lecture. I must say that this is a far-sighted and innovative initiative, and I have no doubt that this event will very quickly become a notable agenda-setting platform in Nigeria's public policy space. It is remarkable that today's lecture is holding in this magnificent edifice, known now as the Balewa House, named after the man who was the driving force behind the establishment of the, of the Nigeria's independent public uh, foreign service. It is also fitting that this first annual public lecture is being chaired by no less a person by than General Gowan, who was head of state and who was head of state nurtured and supported and sustained the Foreign Service during our most difficult years of nationhood. The federal government continues to be guided by the principles of Nigerian foreign policy, which evolved in those early days, and which has been maintained over the years in various ways, including by pursuing the national interest in an Afrocentric manner and combating all manner of racial discrimination as, and particularly emphasizing the dignity of the Nigerian and the African person. Those principles have proved timeless six decades on and form a welcome backdrop to today's lecture. The theme, of course, as you know, is reflections on Nigeria's foreign policy, diplomacy, and the foreign service. Indeed, our foreign po policy challenge is to be relevant to our times, to project our potential and our influence in the world, and to advance our political, cultural, and social and economic vision. Now, this is not as simple as it seems, because the world is changing, as you know, in various ways. Globalization requires better management of trade and financial flows, just as, the, as there is a changing landscape of challenges relating to migration, environment, health, technology across the globe. Indeed, non-state actors, especially criminal non-state act actors, such as terrorist groups, cyber criminals, drug cartels, have complicated a security landscape that was once viewed in relatively uncomplicated notions of just peace and security. These developments have accordingly changed the demands of our diplomatic machinery. Therein lies the biggest challenge of the foreign service of the modern era, adapting to the demands of a new dispensation whilst managing to hold on to the time-honored tools and traditions of diplomacy. Since the traditional responses to all of these issues no longer carry the assuredness of the past, countries today, and our country in particular, have to use a more novel variety of tools, including soft power, to advance our economic and diplomatic objectives. In Nigeria, this would mean perhaps leveraging on entertainment and music and sports, where we have excelled. Our achievements in Nollywood and our achievements in sports, our achievements in entertainment, might be useful ways of opening doors for us, diplomatically and, of course, economically. In, in addition, as the nation's heir to the world, the Foreign Service has a role and a duty to influence policy at home, to consistently nudge the government to take action where necessary in a proactive and engaged manner. This is especially critical at a time when record numbers of Nigerians are featuring in the tragic narratives of slave camps in North Africa and capsizing boats in the Mediterranean. I'm pleased to know uh, and, and to note that our newly launched economic policy initiative of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is one that we have honed around many of what has been said already, aimed especially at creating a platform for Nigerian businesses to more easily find and exploit global markets and to tap the economic potential of the Nigerian diaspora, who tend to be some of the most educated and entrepreneurial populations wherever they are, wherever, wherever we find them, anywhere in the world. 
we must do everything in our power to attract more capital to Nigeria in oil and gas, clean energy, manufacturing, agriculture, transport, power, mining, amongst others, to spread the message and support the goals of our economic recovery and growth plan. It is heartwarming that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs realizes its role in this and understands the power of diplomacy in achieving success in this regard. I must say that I'm especially pleased that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was able to get Ambassador Dr. Oladapo Fafora, an exceptional diplomatist and academician, to give this lecture. Not only is Ambassador Fafora a distinguished historian with a DPhil from Oxford, but he's also a man of history. He was, as, uh, the, as our chairman has noted, the acting high commissioner in Uganda when the coup that unseated General Yakubu Gowon as head of state took place. And as folklore has it, I was just 18 years old at the time. And as folklore has it, he was the one who had the unpleasant duty of breaking the news to uh, General Gowon. But these are happier times, no more coups, nobody. <laughs> But perhaps more importantly, uh, Dr. Fafora has that rare combination of, career, of being a career diplomat and in-depth commerce and industry, uh, in-depth in commerce and, and industry experience, having served as DG of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, immediately after his foreign service career. I'm sure that we're all looking forward to listening to his views today uh, at this lecture. It's my hope and desire that this public lecture will become the platform where the all-important, ever-evolving role of the Nigeria's Foreign Service will be debated and clarified well into the future. I thank you all very much for listening. Thank you.